Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for the Jared Anderson vs. Rodney Hernandez fight in the top rank bubble in Las Vegas. Anderson gets the stoppage win, advances to 6-0. And this was a performance by Anderson where it was a little bit Jekyll and Hyde because sometimes he looked impressive, other times not so much, but clearly a guy with a lot of raw potential um, and he gets the win here. He passes a pretty good test in his early career. Rodney Hernandez shouldn't be understated in terms of the value and what he does in his role as a journeyman, as a gatekeeper. He's a guy, if you can't beat him, well, you have to ask the, the question where you're going in the division. But Anderson pretty much won every second of every round didn't always look super impressive but the stoppage certainly was impressive it came at a point in the fourth round where he actually I thought he was starting to take part of the round off but he was a bit more patient circling a bit more sort of not engaging as much but he was uh, picking his shots a bit more whereas say in the third round where you sort of uh, compared the two Anderson in the third had been really trying to let his hands go put it on Hernandez and for the most part he was missing a lot of shots but he just sort of died back in the fourth round and maybe that was for some part for rest purposes but also he started to land the jab a bit better he wasn't putting everything on the shots but when they were landing they were starting to have a bit more impact and effect and that certainly became clear when he landed a left hand and that uh, sort of did and you see here on screen Hernandez did a bit of the stanky leg and uh, from that point on it was uh, almost a wrap. So uh, Jared Anderson sort of tracks him down, just put some nice shots together, didn't rush his work. He uh, definitely picked the shots that he landed on Hernandez, drops him to the canvas, and the referee waves it off almost immediately. And I didn't think Hernandez was necessarily hurt to the point where he couldn't continue, but I guess we will never know because the ref was straight in there and waved it off. It didn't even perform a count. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting stoppage from that perspective. But at that point, Hernandez certainly, probably it would have just continued to go one way because Anderson was all over him at that point. But until he sort of uh, made him do a bit of that stanky leg, uh, Rodney Hernandez was um, tracking forward. He was uh, trying to make Anderson Anderson work and he was making it a bit awkward and a bit tricky and that was in different spots in the fight but yeah opening up from round one Jared Anderson working the jab Rodney Hernandez uh, tracking forward sort of trying to burrow in work the body get in on the inside uh, not having a lot of success and uh, round two we actually saw Jared Anderson show his versatility he actually switched it up he went southpaw and was southpaw for pretty much most of that round and he landed um, a number of really good shots uh, in that round but also at the end of the first uh, before I go on he finished that one quite strongly so I clearly gave the first um, you know three rounds to Jared Anderson even though that third round he actually was trying to let his hands go but he was missing a lot of shots um, Hernandez was slipping and rolling he was you know making it a bit awkward and tricky for Jared Anderson and I sort of, you know, there was a, a point in the fight where you sort of thought he just needs to maybe not try to rush his work. He was certainly trying to put everything on a lot of the punches in round three, and he wasn't really landing, wasn't having a lot of success. So in the form of a test and... Um, Rodney Hernandez is that guy that's going to make you work that he's going to offer more than just a target who will fall down at the first punch and Anderson actually had to work for this victory which in the context of his career being 6-0 and in the first four or five guys that he faced there wasn't a lot of opposition the first couple of times he really landed clean they fell down not so in this fight against um, Rodney Hernandez who came to fight and he was uh, showing ambition obviously he was a much shorter man he had the reach disadvantage a lot of his punches were either falling short being blocked just largely ineffective he did clip Anderson a couple of times but at no point Anderson ever looked in trouble but the fourth round more patient um picked his spots better and ultimately that stoppage came and when you consider that um, Rodney Hernandez has only been stopped in terms of knockout losses just two times before this fight and that was against Martin Bacoli and also FA Jagba 
it's actually a good look for Jared Anderson. And I was wondering in those first couple of rounds, what sort of power, what sort of effect were these punches having? Because Hernandez didn't look too troubled by it. And the question that, uh, about power, that's one I've had about Anderson. But clearly in that fourth round, when he started to land, he was a bit more fluid. Didn't necessarily have everything on it, but just well-placed, well-timed punches. You know, good speed. Uh, Rod Rodney Hernandez, uh, just at that point, couldn't take it and uh, he was obviously uh, hurt and dropped and the fight was all over so Jared Anderson takes another name and this is a good gatekeeper level win other guys who faced Rodney Hernandez uh, guys who are further along in their career some guys who are considered to have decent power I mean you can think you've got the likes of Jonathan Rice you also have uh, Joey Deweco, Gili Zhang, uh, Adam Kovnatsky, Sergei Kuzman these are guys that went the full distance with Rodney Hernandez so, you know, for Anderson at 20 years old, that's an impressive win for him and it's a good feather in his cap. And it also proves he's ready for that next level. And I think we will see a bit more patience from Anderson going forward because uh, I did wonder if he was starting to tire after that sort of heavy effort that he put in the third round. But he really wanted to put it on Hernandez, but it wasn't really paying off. And hence, I think the um, the slight sort of break in the fourth as he regrouped and uh, just took a mini uh, rest. But at the point that he was doing that, he was still controlling the fight, working his jab. And overall, he still looked in control. And ultimately, when he did start to land, it was all over. So I'm interested to see where they take him next, because six fights, and usually a six-fight pro wouldn't have faced Rodney Hernandez by this uh, point, or a, a guy like Rodney Hernandez. So I'm interested to see who they can pit him against, because more of these types of guys, it will be good for his development. Guys that can actually push him, make him think, and he did sort of switch it up at different times. It wasn't just all the same thing. Didn't necessarily always look great in there. And some of what he was doing, he had to go back to the drawing board. Obviously, he stopped going southpaw in the third round when he was really just trying to beat Rodney Hernandez up. It wasn't quite working because he wasn't landing many shots. So good lessons coming from the fight. Stuff that he can identify, stuff that he can work on. And when he was more fluid, it just, you know, the stoppage came. And he had said ahead of this fight that he was looking for the stoppage, but he wanted to go rounds. And if the stoppage came, well, it came. And that's kind of what happened here, because at the start of the fourth round, I thought, well, this probably looks like it's going all six, because I wasn't sure if uh, Anderson had enough on his punches to trouble Hernandez, but clearly he did. It was uh, a good performance, not great. We saw flashes of his uh, raw potential of what he can do and how he is developing, bearing in mind he's only 20 years old, soon to be 21, but I like where they're taking him. And on the strength of this performance, I'm just looking at box rec now, so he's now inside the top 50, rated at number 47 in the world, 6-0, six, 6 KOs. Jared Anderson's third fight in the bubble, and actually, interestingly, ahead of this fight for the weigh-in, 247 pounds. And perhaps maybe that contributed to that sort of mini slowdown or what looked to be taking a rest in that fourth round. Uh, he was 11 pounds heavier than his first top rank bubble fight, which um, was in June. Uh, he was uh, 236 pounds for that. So I think obviously we have to t bear in mind as well that um, he did take this one at about 10 days notice. So the fact that they were willing to put him into this sort of fight, which wasn't without risk, clearly shows the confidence that they have. But I would expect next time out if Anderson has a longer camp, etc., he probably will be closer to 240. I think ultimately um, for a guy who's what, six foot four, maybe closer to 250 is not actually where he should be. But um, extenuating circumstances perhaps with this one because it was a short notice sort of uh, we're bringing you onto this card. But yeah, what do you make of it all? Jared Anderson, he's a talent to watch. And actually, there was a graphic that they had up on screen. And see here, this is the one. So they're already including, this is top rank, him among the sort of best um, sort of six or eight prospects in the division. Maybe it's a bit, you know, soon to anoint him among some of the company like a Daniel Dubois and Philip Hergovich, etc. But yeah, he's not too far behind. And in another year or two, people are really going to be talking more and more about Jared Anderson and where he's going to go. And that could he be the sort of next wave of American heavyweight champions? What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.